If Henry were here, the most important conversation I would have with him is the following. In my industry, we have essentially, the, the, as you know, the growth, growth phase is huge. I'm going to argue with you that the AI revolution is underhyped, not overhyped. I know that sounds crazy, because at some point we'll be able to have, maybe soon, AI versions of scientists. So you have human scientists, and then we have AI versions. Well, how many can you have? A million, two million. They're just computers. You just more, we just need more electricity. So at that point, the development slope gets to be like this. Okay, follow me. So all of a sudden, we're moving really fast. You have millions and millions of inventions, and these are inventing, you know, new chemistry and new physics and so forth and so on. Well, let's say we're in an arms race with China to use a perhaps possible example, and they're doing the same thing. And for purposes of argument, they're six months behind. And you go, no problem. Six months, tiny amount of time, and so forth. When the slope's like this, you never catch up. Because you enter here, and you're here, but this is still going. Those are called network effect businesses. It's what I live in. They're very abnormal for normal businesses. And because of software and because of scaling and because of the way networks work, these things happen. We have no literature, no philosophy, no planning, no doctrine for these situations where a nation state could get a monopoly leadership position in intelligence. Now, what could that do? Well, for example, it could build a whole new, in theory, it could build a whole new defense missile system without and invent it itself and deploy it without anyone knowing. Until, because it by presumably wouldn't leak what it was doing. So there are all sorts of implications in nation-state competition and AI that we don't fundamentally understand. If Henry were alive today, this is precisely what the next book would be about.